So hi, welcome to Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... I'm Tyndall from Tequila Killies. And we're going to some, some questions say about the upcoming album, Recovery. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Good, man. Uh, it's it's always a nerve-wracking time. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm quite an, quite an anxious man. So you put a lot of work into it and it starts to come out and it it's, I'm just waiting for the day we drop one more single and someone goes, this sucks, and that's going to ruin my life. But other than that, I feel good. Listen, what? listen to the album last night. Shit rips super hard. It goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Of course. Of course. So is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? Both, actually. Yeah. Um, so uh, our first record was called Something to Remember Me By. It was a really, really, really sad album. Uh, it's basically about a story of, uh, I I basically, I got like pretty hard hit with anxiety at 27 years old. Mm-hmm. Had nothing before. I was clean sailing. Didn't even know it existed. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, I started feeling like I was just going to die. Like every minute of the day. And like, I would leave the house and I was like, get mad dizzy and I'd be sitting in like a bar with my friends and I'd be like, I'm going to pass out and then die and they're going to have to deal with this. And it was the worst thing ever. Right. Mm -hmm. And at that time, when we did that first record, the whole record is about not being able to cope with it. And Mm -hmm. spoiler, if you've not heard it, it ends really badly. The whole concept of the album is the person dies (laughs) and it's not great. Uh, Since then, it's been three years since, uh, since about then, actually been about five since I was properly diagnosed and I, I started to come up with some coping mechanisms and and come up with some ways to handle whatever is going on in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so recovery is really about like trying to face your demons and kind of take control of of your life again. And the cover art is um, it's someone at their lowest point. That's uh, that's someone strung out on drugs, unable to face reality. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully by the end of the end of the record, ideally you start with the front cover. By the end of the record, you should hopefully have some coping mechanisms to deal with any of your own troubles makes sense well i'm glad that you're you're you know finding your way through it and coming up with coping mechanisms for it Mm -hmm. i'm getting there it's uh (laughs) still sucks but it's fine yeah yeah fair enough um so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album uh writing process for the record uh often our drummer kieran he's a super talented knows everything uh, he's also a producer for other bands and stuff, so he, uh, he use him a lot. Uh, he'll come up with uh, a section of a song, whether it's a riff or a chord progression or something like that, uh, be about 30 seconds long. Uh, mm-hmm. Then he'll call me into the room and be like, does this sound like us? Mm-hmm. And what does it make you feel? And I'll decide what it is that, that I'm getting from the track. Uh, with Addict, which is the first one, it it's it's about drinking too much but that song sounds like drinking too much to me it sounds like the rush i get when i start and the excitement and the dizzy head and and the i i like that section but then it, i was like i want to take this down because there's always a massive regret the next day mm-hmm. uh so whatever i feel and whatever i come up with he'll then tweak the instrumental based on what we're writing about because we it's just a fact we're a feelsy band like we're always going to be mm-hmm. yeah. so we need to kind of like rely on the vocal to serve the song but he will come up with the instrumental straight away uh you know nine times out of ten sometimes the rest of the guys will come up with something sometimes i'll bring something to the table but he's he's pretty good so we just use his stuff absolutely Fair enough. and you mentioned earlier you're a very anxious person so how do you approach like writing these songs about your struggles and just topics that most people tend not to dive into and you're just completely open with it and you put it out into the world how do you cope with that process um it's kind of it's kind of a double-edged sword if that makes sense Mm -hmm. uh so at the start i just needed someone to tell about all these Mm -hmm. things in my head i think we all grew up with a culture of like you shouldn't talk about how you're feeling or you should especially if it's bad talk about how you're feeling if it's good but if you feel bad keep it inside and i mm-hmm. i think there's a there's a thing where like there's a big thing about the gender divide of oh men don't ask for help but i know so many women who will not say anything i think it's just a human thing i think we're always concerned about our emotions and stuff and like you don't want to seem weak to anyone 
And, mm. and I get it. It's a difficult thing to do. So I was hiding how I felt from from everyone that I knew. And when I had the option to to write a record, I was like, oh, well, I'll just I'll say it there more so to get it out of me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I often feel like when something's in your head, it, it can seem like such a bigger thing until it's out. And then you go, OK, no, I, I, I've rationalized it. I've said it out loud. I've heard it through my own ears and maybe it's not as bad or maybe someone can give you like a little bit of advice. Mm-hmm. So I did that and it, it kind of made me annoyingly more anxious because how is it going to go down? But then since then, this is the most pretentious answer ever. I'm so sorry. I'm not cool. Just so you're right. <laughs> but I've had a couple of people message me and and just personally say like, hey, man, I, I felt a certain way. And I didn't know that someone else felt a certain way until you said that you felt that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And since getting that, I kind of felt like we're all looking for purpose as humans, right? Mm-hmm. Like we all need something to be here for. And that feels like if I can, even if it's one guy on the internet who got something from something I said, it kind of feels like a nice purpose for me. I I don't do much other things. Like I I work in music and stuff like that and I enjoy it. But like that moment was like, okay, maybe these stupid songs that I write in my bedroom could actually help someone. So it's scary. Yes. But it it also kind of feels like a privilege to Mm -hmm. to be allowed to be the guy who's just putting it all out there. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's a strange one. I, I I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing or not, but at the moment it's it's going okay. Okay, that makes oh, sense. Yeah. I'm proud of you. It's awesome. Thank you. Of course. Uh, so, what song off this album took longest to write, and which one is your personal favorite? Oh, uh, longest to write. Longest to write. Uh, there's a song called Ghost Town, um, and we did a thing where it, it was completely my fault. We had the whole song. And it was it was great, and everyone signed off on it. And I was like, I hate everything I said. I hate it all. Um, I I tried to write it about like, like the idea of like a revolution and like joining with a million people and trying to like fight for what you stand up for. Mm-hmm. And I just realized it just didn't fit in with the rest of the record. It wasn't the type of thing that we were talking about with the idea of getting better and and taking your struggles and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, it just always tweaked me. Uh, so that almost got cut completely. It was just not going to be there. And I think like two days before, like the deadline of like the deadline to start properly recording, mm-hmm. I think I was like, I've got an idea. Give me like an hour. And I came up with this thing. And I was, it's 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 just about like the social media aspect of my life where like I'm addicted to my phone, mm-hmm. but I hate it. I hate it so much and I hate that I'm losing human connection and I hate that like I can't go for dinner with someone who doesn't mm. care more about the thing that is always in their pocket than the person sitting across from them and, and I, I ended up really liking it so that one took the longest personal favorite for me is a song called The Cave um, it was just a I got to try something I've never done before which was like kind of speaking instead of shouting and it started as like a poem that I was writing and I never thought I'd use it as a song. And then Kieran came up with that little guitar hook and, and kind of made like a dancey beat under it. And I was like, man, I've got something that does not suit this at all, but I think it might be cool. <laughs> and uh, I, I just love it. The continual build and a lot of the things that I got to say in there, like kind of really reflected how I felt at the time. It's just a it's very cathartic for me. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so how did the track list for the album come about? Did you guys write the opener of the opener, close to be a closer? Did you shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? Uh, that's a good question, actually. No one's asked me that. Um, so we had about, I think we had about seven songs and there was no order whatsoever. It was just, this kind of sounds like what we're doing next. And it is a slight change from what we used to do and a, a couple of different influences and stuff there. So um, we were like, this feels cool. But once we got to seven songs, we're like, right, okay, we're writing a, an album here. It's not an EP. It's not just a bunch of singles. We're doing that thing again. And I, then once we were there, we were like, right, go through it. Which one starts the record? And we didn't have a star. So we wrote Addict. Mm-hmm. And then uh, this is kind of funny, actually. I'll probably get in trouble for saying this. But uh, <laughs> the, the last song uh, is called Recovery. It was because we were under the time scale given. So like the record had to be 40 minutes. That was what we were asked to do. Oh. And we were 37 minutes. Oof. So we were like, oh, 
God, we need to write another one. So <laughs> I think that's just squeezed in there just because we were running out of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's still a good song. It's, still, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Um, there's a saxophone in it. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> you guys were just literally throwing shit at the wall. You're like, oh, man, we haven't we used were... this fucking instrument yet. <laughs> yeah, dude. Out, out of idea and a fresh Fiverr account. And I was like, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, it kind of like, we had the body of it and then we started writing for specific moments that maybe made it feel more flowy and then and then we had about a four week argument between each of the members going i think that should be there and i think that should be there and and it was never an argument it was just disagreements and stuff and we're all like best friends so it's super easy Mm -hmm. someone will just be like you're wrong by the way and then we're just like whatever man but then you have to think about it for two weeks and then you're like i think you're right that i'm wrong and they're like no i've changed my mind oh (laughs) a nightmare so yeah but it's it was simple enough it was kind of get the body of the record then fill in the gaps if that makes sense that makes sense gotcha Mm -hmm. so would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this record yeah yeah um so it was it was quite cool actually so i hate bringing it up because we're 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 past it now Mm -hmm. and we're feeling better but it it was just post-covid you know Mm -hmm. yeah and um in that time it was it was really strange because obviously everyone was in their homes for like two years or whatever i don't know how long it was where you were and stuff but there was a lot of like restriction and stuff and things just started opening and we were speaking to a rising empire and they were like we think you should do another record because the first record kind of hit during covid and it, it kind of got lost a little bit mm-hmm. um and in that moment when things were opening up again it's like i don't know if you got this i think everyone did did you start to feel really, really precious of everything that you never were before? You know, like, yeah. like the, they'd open the fact that you could go to the gym. And before I'd be like, I hate the gym. I hate going. I don't want to go. I'm only doing it for my stupid health. And then as soon as they opened it, I was like, oh, my God, I love the gym. Like, <laughs> and, and it was this moment of like, everything felt better because it all been taken away. Mm-hmm. So it felt like this fresh idea of like, things are getting better. Mm-hmm. And then, so when we, we we write records, it's always concept based. We always have a thing to write about first. It's mm-hmm. like a big story that comes from somewhere and it always comes from how we feel at that exact moment and like the most prevalent part. And I feel like when things were opening and life was going back and I could go and visit my mum, that was cool. And mm-hmm. uh, and I could like be in the same room as my friends and stuff. Yeah. There was this like uplifting feeling of like, even though this was terrible, it's getting better. It's not... Mm-hmm fully better yet but it's getting better mm-hmm. and that kind of just inspired the whole record of like well maybe my head might be a bit of a dark place now and again mm-hmm. but if you look through that there's a lot of light shining on my life and I, I should be very grateful for it and I am and I guess instead of whinging about it like I did on the first album I'm kind of trying to <laughs> kind of try to be grateful for it you know yeah, that makes yeah, sense absolutely all right uh, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? If they're doing the car with friends and dark with headphones on, is the workout album, party album? What do you personally recommend? Oh, okay. So it's staged, and I will warn you right now, it's staged intentionally from us. Mm-hmm. But I'm a firm believer. I, I love the lost start of the album. You know, the start to finish. I, mm-hmm. I love it. It feels like a continual story. There is two sections in the album. There's side one and side two. It was almost written for vinyl, right? Uh, Side one is exciting. It's fun. It's good gym songs. Mm -hmm. It's good driving songs. Driving to addicts fun. Uh, It's good walking songs. It's just like good to listen to in in your own time. Then halfway through the first half, it becomes very bleak. Mm. Like very bleak. It hits quite hard and... It's just, it's that ebb and flow of life. You know, sometimes you're up and then you really fall down. And once you fall down, the only way to go is back up. Yeah. So if you're listening to it and you just want bangers, skip track five and six and you'll be fine. (laughs) If you want to feel what I would class as almost like a secular, like, story of someone's, Mm -hmm. like, entire life, start to finish is the way you can do it with friends if you do it on your own you might hear more of the messages. Mm -hmm. Uh, But at the same time, not all music's for messages. I love a banger, you know? (laughs) Sometimes I just want to put something on in the car. Yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, it's I'll warn you, there's there is although it's it's hopeful, mm-hmm. there's a couple in there that are not very hopeful. All right. Okay. That's completely fair. <laughs> Uh, so this one should be super, super quick off the top of your head. I want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. It's emotional mm-hmm. punk. That's ah, just metal, isn't it? It's oh, just when you think about it. it, it's just I, I, we always try and get away from it. But mm-hmm. we're always like, oh, we're kind of like a punk band with like a rock edge and stuff. Mm-hmm. No, it's a metal. It's a metal <laughs> album with punk influence. Mm-hmm. And it's really emotionally driven. Hey, that's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Metal with punk influence. I, I fuck with that. Yeah. Why do you want to get away from the metal label so bad? Like, I feel like there's labels that bands want to get away from, and that's not one that we hear often. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually punk. Yeah, pop punk uh, to be specific. Yeah. Oh, pop punk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. Um, obviously nothing against it. I love it, right? Mm-hmm. But um, if you come and see our show live, mm-hmm. it is a very emotionally driven thing, mm-hmm. like insanely. There was songs on the last record dedicated to our drummer's mum who passed away when he was 14. And I do a five minute speech before it about thanking her for giving birth to him. Do you know, like it's it's a very emotionally driven thing. Oh. And if you put that on with a hardcore band or a slam band or a metal band of any kind, mm-hmm. you stand out. right? True. Okay. Because yeah. you've got these people who love breakdowns and want to two step and want to mosh and do all their stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting going, would you like to hear a story about when I was 15 and bullied? And like, <laughs> and then you get some half-hearted and, woos at the end. Yeah. And like, I, I, we always go down well, I, well enough, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, I enjoy it. Uh, but with a metal crowd, some people, they want to just go and like throw down. And it's like the aggression in the music is like uh, a release for them mm-hmm. to be like, you know, maybe you're bored during like the week of the job and you just want to like shout and and run about and throw yourself about and when we come on and i'm sitting talking about like literally there's a so i apologize for this trigger warning uh but there's a song about my cousin who i lost and he took his own life like two years ago and it's the worst thing i've ever dealt with and i play that song to dedicate to that guy to feel for five minutes that i'm speaking to my friend again do you know what i mean it's a very um selfish thing actually for me but it's nice to be around if you're into like the idea of like exploring your emotion and like letting letting go, being in a room full of people all not afraid to accept that life isn't easy all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's not what I go to a metal show for. Mm. So I feel like if we call ourselves metal, then it's it's like those people might be like, yeah, I love metal. And then I'll ruin their day. And I don't want to okay. ruin anyone's day. <laughs> okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that that's fair enough. Um, but I think that it's like you can kind of like make your own safe space within mm. the the metal community of like people that actually want to hear that because I know like there are bands that I have seen that do what you do. Um, mm-hmm. So like I, I think it I think it's possible to still associate. I didn't know if it was just because like you know the metal community can be. Little... interesting oh. sometimes but yeah. that, that's a fair yeah. enough point that you make there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of interesting things in music in general isn't there like yeah. it's you you worry about people sometimes I'm, fan bases are fucking people. weird yeah yeah, yeah. Strange. Man, bands can be weird though man like mm. true yeah. you know some yeah. some some weird shit going on it's not always the fans yeah yeah, Got yeah. yeah. so mm. Yeah, no, no beefs with the with the communities. Just, just don't know how to set someone up for what they might actually hear. That's fair. Okay, enough. Yeah. that's fair. Um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? Okay, I'm gonna say no, but in, a, in a, I'm gonna give you a reason for it. Right? Okay. Um, I've been told I have a strength and a weakness, and that's it. And funnily enough, they're the same thing. So I think I just divide people, right? But a lot of people tell me that the lyrics that I write when we're putting out this record and stuff, they're always very just to the point. They're not very shrouded in metaphor. It's all very, this is how I felt on this day, right? Mm -hmm. And some people call that a strength because it's straight talking. And some people call it a weakness because they think I'm not smart enough to write metaphors. Those second people are correct. Um, (laughs) But I still believe that when you listen to the records, you'll find what they mean to you. Right. There's no point in me telling you what I think about these certain things, because 
it's it's like anything someone tells you that they've just been fired from their job right mm -hmm. uh when you get told that from your friend you could be like oh hey i didn't get fired but my uncle moved away and i miss him kind of thing you, it's it's they're not linked but you link them in your head mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand how you feel when you're talking about this because this similar thing happened to me. So I don't, I try not to tell people how to listen or what to think about. Okay. It's if anything comes to you through the process, then you're right. You're entirely correct. Okay. Fair enough. Fuck yeah. All right. Uh, so are you able to talk about any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of this album, positive or negative? Oh, I've got one for you. Oh, okay. shit. No, <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I honestly, I think this record tried to kill me a uh, fair few times. Mm. Um, so I, I produced the record with our drummer, Kieran, right? So we okay. both, we're both music producers and uh, we're not like big time. Don't worry. We're the local guys, but we just like doing our own records because we're so attached to it that like, we feel like no one else is going to put in the same care yeah. as we would just be just because we care so much, you know? Yeah. Um, so he obviously plays drums. I took my entire rig. I took it down to a studio that we booked for two weeks. We hired a beautiful drum kit, all these wonderful mics. I was on top of tuning for weeks. I We nailed it. The drum sound I got was the greatest drum sound ever. Now, notice I'm saying was, was. because mm -hmm. the second I got home, I turned my computer on and it died and the hard drive fried. Oh, the hard drive yeah. fried. Oh, God. Yep. No, and then I, I sent it to the data recovery guy and I sent it to the people that built the computer because it was a custom build for recording because I thought that would be safe. Yeah. And uh, and it was all gone. And like the whole record was gone, like not even just the drums, because I oh, just finished fuck. the guitar reamps the day before. And I was like, oh, my God. And like, if you could see me in that moment, like, I think I have a text from I, like Kieran has a text from me that he screenshotted that just says, dude, it's fucked. I'm <laughs> going to kill myself. And that's it. And like, obviously, I was never going to. But yeah, it was yeah. ruined, man. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God. And I remembered on the last day of drums, I remembered this two weeks later, mm -hmm. I backed up onto an external hard drive and I actually found everything. But for two weeks, it was completely gone. So wow. you were able to recover it. I got most of it. There was a couple of things I had to redo. So there is a mix of the album that exists that no one will ever hear, including me. <laughs> um, but we, we got there. I think I had to do like like maybe a week of of extra things just to get it back to where it was and there's there's always that thing of like you're like oh no that synth's missing and you have no idea how you made that sound mm -hmm. so yeah. you just kind of make a new one and go it's not the same but it's oh. yeah, yeah so there was no like looking on the bright side of oh at least i get to make this part better it was just like oh this is fucked i think sometimes i got some better stuff i think a few okay. times i was like maybe just because i'd lost it i was able to be like you know, I didn't really like that guitar tone. I'll just try again and like tweak it yeah. out a little bit and stuff. And I'm really happy with how it came out now. So yeah, damn. it's it's okay. But God damn, man, that sucked. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. 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 So grim. <laughs> um, so for this question, we want you to picture you're on tour. You're at gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What's your snack of choice? Oh, right. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a chips guy. Uh, so I've, I'm the, the only vegetarian in the band. Uh, I'm just the awkward guy. That's it. Right. There's the guy who's always crying and doesn't eat anything either, by the way. Um, so <laughs> it's yeah. Vegetarian in like, so we've never been to the States or anything, which is upsetting. Uh, but in Europe, vegetarian is not cared for very well. Really? It's getting there. It's getting better. Uh, we played in Russia. They have never had a vegetarian diet uh, ever. So a lot of the time I, I'm eating uh, chips, which is what I would call them, but French fries for you guys. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a big one. Yeah, chips. Um, and, uh, and just like chocolate, which ruins my diet. But it's all that I'm allowed. Yeah. Because everyone else is getting hot dogs and pizza and stuff. And I'm like, oh, maybe they'll have Rub a margarita. And nope, pepperoni only. I, hate it fuck <laughs> what? sucks man it sucks that makes no fucking sense like I you're know, adding right? you're adding the fucking pepperoni to I'm, a i'm asking for pizza. the 
Yeah, I want the base ingredients, dude. Yeah. But I'm no. saving you money. Like, this <laughs> makes no fucking sense, man. At this point, I'll pay double. <laughs> I'll pay double oh, for no pepperoni. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's rough, man, so. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, uh, on your pizza, your little pizza story, I'm vegan. And oh, wow. In my, oh, tw- it, the big guns. Yeah. In my, <laughs> tw- in my 20 years of living, like, I, I'll go to I'll go to this sit-down pizza place that makes this really thin crust pizza, and I've, o- I've always had to get it with no cheese and just get olives on it, so it's just sauce and olives, and shut up glory sorry um, sorry it, you know and i i never got any weird looks the past couple of times i went with my partner i have gotten everybody around me whispering including the waitress and i'm like i don't know like <laughs> it, you'd think especially now it would be accepted like yeah yeah it's, it's yeah. vegans way better like like obviously i eat a lot of vegan because it's it's the same actually what i noticed is ever since vegan took like a bit more popularity <laughs> they stopped making vegetarian stuff and now i'm forced to be vegan which is fine oh. <laughs> it's fine i like it i'll yeah. be honest that's yeah. good but yeah the the vegan thing uh, like don't 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 go russia man uh, I, I wasn't planning <laughs> probably not right now anyway yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah they're, 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 yeah, they're busy over there right now <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not ideal. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, well done to you, man. It's a it's a great thing to do. I'm a very firm believer. I'll one day get around to making the switch to the big guns. But Fair enough. I've, I, I've I've done this for like 20 years, and I'm like 30 just now. So I, yeah. I, I'm I'm an OG veggie. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have much of a choice. My mom had no. me, and she was just like, "You're vegan now, and uh, you know, goo goo gaga, whatever." <laughs> cool. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. Solid, man. Yeah, I, I made the choice. I made the choice, but just young. And then my mom was like, "Do I really have to buy two different meals for every dinner?" And I was like, "Nah, you could be veggie too." And now she is. So sorry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. So on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be, and why? Oh, that's so difficult. Yeah. All right, I've got it. Terrible answer. I apologize. I'm not creative. Uh, I'm going to go burgers, right? But I'm oh, okay. going to make sure that that's plural because there's a little bit of something for everyone and you can scout through and change out ingredients and do your thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like we take a lot of influence from different genres and stuff. So you can kind of mix and match, build your own. Mm-hmm. And everyone likes a burger, right? Like you can't yeah. go wrong. That's fair. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, it's just chins. Yeah. Sounds good. Hell yeah. You know, I respect it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck nice. yeah. Um, so for the last couple of questions, it's going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? I honest, no, no, I wouldn't because if it's terrible and I just don't remember, no, I'm going, I'm going flat, right? I'm going flat. It's good. Okay. Uh, favorite food of all time, anything Mexican. So okay. I, um, I am going, I'm going a burrito or fajitas or quesadillas, any Mexican food that they will give me, but mm. I want, I want guac. I want sour cream. I want the works, right? I'm not having just a little bit of salsa on the side. I want queso. I want everything that has Mm. been on a Mexican menu. Yeah. And with a drink, I am a sucker for a beer and I love a Corona and it's Mexican beer as well. There you go. I'm a Mexican Mexican lover. There you go. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah, man. That's fucking awesome. Um, So if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? A fictional world? A fictional world. Oh, I could let so many things slip right now. I'm not sure how much of a geek I am. Uh... Oh, got it. If I could live in Mario Kart for a week, that would be sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. (laughs) Like, all day racing. Like, I just, right, this is so lame. I'm like 33 years old, right? (laughs) I just learned how to drive like two years ago. (laughs) And I'm still at the moment where it feels illegal. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like racing about like there is no reason i should be allowed to do this if i could live in mario kart and start picking up power-ups and throwing shells at people mm-hmm. i'm in that'd be fucking badass hell yeah hell you yeah. can I don't know do if I'm that com- now but yeah i don't isn't... know if i'm coming back after the week if i'm being honest that sounds <laughs> yeah. like a good tech yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um so i've done a best last question every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question what's your favorite color purple specific shade of purple uh a darker purple nice. when purple just edges close to black oh so it's shit. like this kind of deep like, like uh, that eggplant color 
Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, eggplant. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like that kind of like really dark purple. I don't know. I try and get, I've got a, a bunch of like, my all my lights change color in this room. Mm -hmm. And the one behind the desk that I'm sitting at right now is like that kind of dark purple tone. I don't know why. I also know that the reason I thought that is I, I always get colors and songs together. And when I was growing up, my favorite song ever was Ride the Wings of Pestilence by From First to Last. Mm -hmm. OG emo, by the way. Um, <laughs> and that song is purple and no one can tell me they're wrong. <laughs> Damn right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, yeah, man. Um, Hell yeah, man. yeah. So as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Mm -hmm. Yes. So our new album, Recovery, comes out on the 11th of August. Mm -hmm. Um if you want to stream it, it'll be on all the streaming websites, all that and stuff. Check it out. Send us a DM. Tell us how you think. If you don't like it, tell me how to make it better for the next time. If you do like it, if you get anything from it, just let us know. If you ever want anyone to talk to, I try and be as, as active as I can on our DMs and stuff because I, I get it, man. It's not, it's not easy out there. So give us a shout. If I can reply, I obviously will. And if you want to support our band directly, uh, we have a shop at www.tequilachilles.shop. And if you pick up a t-shirt or whatever, they, they're literally in my living room next door. And I send it out and half the time put little notes in it and stuff. And Aww. that money goes directly to us, which allows us to hopefully go and play lots of shows very soon. So if, if anyone would like to help out, that's cool. Again, I get that money isn't great for everyone just now. So if you can't, just stream the record and I hope you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, well, yeah. thank you for now. This has been Mark from To Kill Achilles, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.